Hello everybody. Today, now that I have my breeding pair finally collected, I want to talk a little bit about Hogna carolinensis, Carolina wolf spider, or the giant wolf spider. A gray spider. A fossorial spider. A fossorial spider that doesn't spend much time in its burrow, but nonetheless, it's a completely fossorial spider. If it makes a burrow, it will make a burrow straight up and down, um, barring obstacles in the way. And it will make a turret most of the time of some kind on top. And the reasons they make the turrets, people, I guess, argue over the reasons they make the turrets. Is it so they can have a high view of things? Is it for protection from flooding so the water flows around it? Is it to extend the burrow, which I'll show you in a minute. A lot of times it's simply to extend the burrow. Um, but it's all of the above. Uh, a lot of insects will walk up and subsequently fall down <laughs> into the burrow. Um, and they can survive temperatures. These were pulled from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains um, at between six and 7,000 feet. And uh, yeah, they survived the winter. The burrow she was in was much deeper than a foot. I was about six inches deep when I saw her in what I thought was a tarantula burrow and I saw the orange calicera you can kind of see them and that's also a sign of a fossorial spider that's what you see orange warning there's something in this hole there's no room in this hole for a threat pose you know and a, a lot of spiders will be fossorial spiders will be brightly colored you know um, I got this juvenile as well down here and it really is a gray spider um, I think that's how the actual description of it starts out and when I was trying to identify these originally I'm like okay so what I mean what's not a gray spider you know <laughs> uh, but that's really at first glance it is a gray spider. Um, the medial band is lighter, fairly straight on these. And uh, if you look really close, there is a pattern, but it's really, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it's really grayed out. And uh, the ventral is all black, the knees, the knees have stripes the underside of all of the knees on these um, and the whole underside of the ventral is black now there's other wolf spiders that have an all black ventral and a lot of people have talked about carolinensis as you know some of them have a lot of some of them have a lot of browns on them and stuff. And I have seen some from other localities that did look like they had browns on them. That's why I didn't order a female. I wanted to wild collect this locality um, if I'm going to breed these. But here's a good look look-alike for me when I was trying to find these. Because people said completely black ventral, striped legs... And uh, they can have some browns. This is this is Hogna antelucana, and you can see the medial band on this kind of goes in and out. And the flower petal patterns are crisp. All the patterns are crisp. Um, and also on these, the knee joints are not all black, and the calicerae are not. I don't know if I've ever seen one that's really orange. It's not. A fossorial spider um, 
and they'll kind of make these dirt curtains and they'll kind of dig these. Here's another example. Hagna Antelucana. They'll dig these uh, these things, but they just use them for mostly for uh, molting or laying eggs and finding the right humidity for that egg sac in there. Otherwise, they're not really a fossorial spider. The Carolinensis is classed really with the Geolycosa. It is a true fossorial spider like this, Geolycosa that I also collected when I was collecting these has a turret lives in the ground has orange chelicere if it will show itself these are mistaken for carolinensis a lot but if you look at my other videos uh, you'll be able to see it lives in a hole very very similar now this one though it's building its turret because it does not have enough substrate this is, it's nothing. It's four or five inches of substrate for something that prefers to make a perfectly vertical burrow 12, 15 inches. So it's building up and I keep giving it more leaves and uh, maybe I'll even put some more dirt around that. This is purely an extension. The Geolycosa will make a small turret that looks as though it's primarily flood water but you know given the necessity they'll build something quite similar to carolinensis anyway i wanted to show the spider um and i i'm really oh here we go this one this one just jumped out of here I've been collecting every wolf spider I see for a long time, for eight months, trying to get Carolinensis. This one's the right color, isn't it? But I don't think it's Carolinensis, not the right pattern, but... I've been collecting so many of these little wolf spiders. Anyway, um... I keep them fossorially. This one hasn't, uh, gotten used to used to it yet when it's ready to molt I'm hoping it'll move in there it's still too wet on top you want it to be wet on the bottom and dry on top so they actually have a reason to burrow um, but I put its native soil on top of this and um, and watered it to see what I could get to grow and it really pops on that red clay I think um, so hopefully when it's ready to molt these plants will be started, sorry for the shaking, and I can dry it out and get them going. Now, you'll see them running around terrestrially sometimes, but I think that's primarily due to being displaced from their burrows. Um, the younger the spiders are, the more often you'll see them. Um, but, you know, I mean, they've been, the smaller the spider is, the easier they are to displace from their burrow. Um, and I think most of it's probably ants. Ants will displace a full-size spider, no problem. Um, but when I dug up that female Carolinensis, she was not getting displaced. Um, and she bit onto that stick for me, so I was able to drag her out far enough to block her path. Because I was down about six inches, and she looked like she had as far as I could see to go still. <laughs> down her burrow, so... If these are living terrestrially and it's not just a male walking off to his demise, um, they've been displaced. Otherwise, it finds a burrow or digs a burrow. Um, and it's a really beautiful burrow. Also, another thing that I was reading, um, and it caused me to identify this as a male when it wasn't even nearly full grown, but I'd never seen how big they get or as a female, I mean, was that I read something that only the females make the burrows with the turrets. And so, here we are. Very beautiful turret. Been working on it since, I don't know, for five months. <laughs> Definitely not a female. Definitely not a female. I promised I'd get him one. So here we are, 
I don't know if I got her egg sac too wet when we were catching her or what, but she's here. She opened it, it looked like, but I don't see any babies, so I'm just hoping for the best. I made her an underground lair, kind of. Um, she will have to work on it, but I held that burrow open with cardboard and filled it in and then pulled the cardboard out so there is a cavity under there and I'm hoping as soon as she's done with whatever's going on with these egg sacs this egg sac that <clears throat> she'll move in a little more and then we'll see if the adult spiders do a whole lot of burrowing but I mean she doesn't have enough substrate to do to do this but uh yeah, be curious to see. And then uh, if I have some babies, you'll see some babies. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff.